web testing on Lambda test. In our previous video, we talked about web automation testing on desktop browsers. But as mentioned, we support automation testing on desktop browsers as well as on mobile browsers. Today, let's talk about how easy we can perform or run our web automation test cases on real device browsers or on emulator simulators. What you see on the screen is the automation dashboard where all of your test cases get landed up once you execute your test cases from your script. Before getting into the dashboard, let's see how easy is it to send our test cases onto Lambda test. Here, what you see on my screen is a basic code where I'm just opening up a website, clicking on a few items and making a few actions. In a similar manner, if you have any code of your web application that is written in any language, you just need to add two steps before so that you can send out your test cases to Lambda test. So let's talk about those two transition steps. The first one is you need a Lambda test username, access key and a hub URL in order to send your test cases to Lambda test. From where you can get this information is from the automation dashboard itself. So on the automation dashboard, you have an option called access key. Under the access key, you'll get the username, the access key, as well as the hub URL. Once you have these, then you need to instruct the Lambda test grid or inform the Lambda test grid as to what particular device or browser or version you want to execute or run your tests on. For that, we have an option called capabilities. And from where you can generate these capabilities is from an intuitive document that we have, we like to call as a capability generator. You can open the capability generator directly from the automation dashboard by clicking on this question mark icon and click on capability generator. I have it already open. So I'll quickly jump on to the capability generator based on your language and framework. You can choose the drop down to select between the languages and the frameworks that you're working on. Then click on APM since we are talking about mobile browser testing. Once you click on APM, you'll get the options to choose between Android and iOS. Just click on Android and iOS and you can choose the devices on which you want to run the test cases on. Once you make the selection on the right hand side, you can see that the capability object is automatically created and you can simply copy this and use in your code base. This capability that you see here, which shows real device. Before talking about it, I would like to again highlight the Lambda test is the only platform that currently allows you to run your test cases on both emulator simulators as well as on real devices. So to bifurcate between both, we have a capability called real device, which if you toggle it on, you'll get a new capability added in your capability object called is real mobile true, which will make sure that any of the test cases that you're running are only landed up on a real device instead of an emulator or a simulator. So going back to the code base. So here, as you can already see, that I already have a capability object created. And once I have the username access key hub URL and the capability, I just need to create a remote web driver connection. So the remote web driver connection includes my hub URL, which includes my username access key, as well as the Lambda test grid URL, which is hub.lambdas.com and the capabilities. I'll show you the difference that you'll have to make in your code in order to run or trigger your test cases onto a real device or an emulator simulator. For now, in my case, currently my test will be getting triggered and will be run on an emulator, and on an emulator or a simulator. Since I'm using a Java test ng, I'm fetching the values, that is the capabilities dynamically from an XML file. And in the XML file, I've already mentioned the device, its platform and the platform version where I want to run the test cases on. So as you can see, I'm running one of my test cases on an iOS device. 
and the second one on an Android device. So I'll go back to my code section and simply run this. As soon as I run my test case, in a few seconds, as soon as the processing is done, the test case will automatically land up on the LAMP test automation dashboard. If I scroll here, so you can see a new build here has landed up called demo emulator. And as soon as I click on this demo emulator, as you can see, one of the test cases has already landed up. And this is because I have a thread count set in my code, which says one. So only after one execution, it will send the second. But on Lambda test, you also have the provision to run test cases parallelly. That is, you can run both of these executions together without waiting for one to complete. Here, as we were talking about, this is all the build view. That is my build, which I named demo emulator has landed here. And inside that build, I get the view of all of the test cases that I ran. In my case, since I only ran two test cases, I'll go into one of them. Inside this test case, you can see, I'll get the status, I'll get the test name, the test ID, as well as here the device on which the test ran on. Then here I'll get the complete execution video of the test along with the complete command logs as well. At the bottom of the video, I'll also get basic info which includes who ran the test and what duration it took to execute the test and also the input config which gives you all of the capabilities that you pass while running the test. Also, you'll get the video as well. Then we also provide you the network logs and the APM logs, console logs and terminal logs as well. The network logs currently are not appearing because in my code base, I passed the capability as network true as false. So the network log, console logs and the screenshots that we capture on each and every command, all of those can be controlled using our Lambda test capabilities. Also, for this particular test case, if you want to share it directly to any of your team members or outside, you can directly use a shareable link to share it. Also, if let's say this is an issue and you want to raise it to one of your developers or one of your team, you can simply click on create an issue and this will automatically open up the one click bug logging where you can directly log a bug to your bug marking tool, tool and send it to your communication channel as well. So here the test case has been executed and if I go back to the build view, you can see both of my test case, one on a Galaxy S20 that's an Android and the other one on an iPhone has been executed and passed. Now, as I was talking about in the beginning that we support both emulator simulators as well as real devices. So as shown on the capability generator, we need to add in a capability on the code side, which is is real mobile true so that it picks up the inventory from the real mobile and the one different other change that you have to make in order to execute your test cases on a real mobile is that the hub URL in case of real mobile would be mobilehub.lambdatest.com. I'll repeat this point once again. For executing your test cases on emulators and simulators, you do not have to use any additional capability. You just need, and the hub URL would be hub.lambdatest.com. However, whenever you want to execute any of your test cases on real mobile browsers or real devices, you'll have to add a capability called is real mobile true and also use the hub URL mobilehub.lambdatest.com. I hope this session was helpful. In case you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to lambda support or support at rate lambdatest.com.